synth. <clears throat> Hello, it is... My hair is... What the fuck? What is happening with my fucking hair? <laughs> ah, fuck, I forgot the date. Ah, July 7th. Hello, it is July 7th, 2021. It is... 2 o'clock in the morning. It's a Wednesday. I have a couple weeks. I have a couple weeks to pack up everything in my fucking apartment. I am moving to Texas. And then a couple days after that, I'm going to surgery to have stage zero of phalloplasty, which is what I am calling my hysterectomy. Um, I apologize. Is my, is my chacne that visible? Whatever. This is me. Who fucking cares? I'm probably going to be showing pictures of my penis eventually. So like, <laughs> time for modesty is over. Um, this is me, uh, this is, um, these are from my testosterone shots, so these, these two marks here, um, but, yeah, this is my tum tum, I'm gonna get three scars, uh, cause they're gonna go into this area with, with a cool robot, uh, so there's gonna be a scar here, here, and then one they're gonna hide in my belly button, but, yeah, this is, um, I'm just trying to document as much as possible. You know, there are so many things that are going to be out of my control. I'm not going to be able to, uh, work out for two months after surgery. I'm going to be sad, uh, because of that, but I'll just write a lot and edit a lot, work on my original show, um, distract myself with things that are not, uh, workout related. And I know it probably sounds, I'm going to switch hands. Oof. You don't realize how heavy a camera is until you're holding it for a bit. Um, I know it probably sounds fucking stupid to some people where it's like, oh no, you can't work out for a couple months. Like fucking just, you know, why would that make you sad? It, it's, it's endorphins when you're, when I, I don't do drugs, I only drink socially. I don't gamble, I don't have a porn addiction. Working out is just my thing. Um, so when it's gone, my body and my brain don't know what the fuck to do. Um, so I'm gonna just deal with it. I'm gonna deal with it. I, I had a little taste of it, taking time off because uh, I got LASIK done and I couldn't work out for a week afterwards and that was really tough. Uh, so I can only imagine how tough it's going to be <laughs> one week times four. Eight. Fuck, I'm stupid. I'm an English major. I don't have to do math. I failed two college math classes. I'm gonna switch this over again. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, top surgery, you know, I couldn't uh, work out for... How long, how long was I in there? Um, a month and two weeks. So it was six weeks total. I was not allowed to work out. Um, I was supposed to start working out like at the month marker after four weeks. Um, and my doctor approved it, but I worked out too hard. And, uh, you know, he was like, maybe let's keep, let's keep you in the binder for another two weeks and let's, uh, you know, just take it easy the next two weeks. So I have never not worked out for this long. It's gonna be tough. Um, I have been working out every other day um, since more than a year ago. Uh, if you're new to my stuff, quarantine happened and I was like, I wanna turn this into something positive. So I started working out as much as I needed to uh, in order to just really fucking push myself 100% of the time because I don't know how to slow down. I don't know how to not work, which is why these two months are going to be very tough. I don't know how to not fucking work as hard as I can. Uh, so this is going to be a challenge and I'm very excited for it. I'm excited for the mental challenge of just not what, not being able to do this thing that I want to do. Um, so I'm going to work out as much as I can before the surgery date. And then I'm just gonna fucking chill. We're gonna fucking vibe. Maybe I'll do more Twitch streams or something. We'll figure it out. It'll be good. Anyway. This is me. What is my hair doing? Whoa, 
hey there, real quick. Uh, future Jesse here. Uh, you know that thing where you hear a word for the first time and you just kind of memorize it and you might have been memorizing it incorrectly, but it doesn't matter because it's stuck in your head the way that it is? Anyway, totally unrelated, this should be called stage zero of phalloplasty, not phase. And I'm going to say phase a bunch, a bunch of times in the next at least two or three videos. But just know it's stage. Let's continue. Sorry for I just needed to take a second. Let's on with the video. Hello, it's Friday, July 9th. It's 1233 in the afternoon. I was about to say morning. I'm nocturnal at the moment. Time is fucky. I'm just documenting this because it is one of my uh, many electrolysis appointments. I have uh, basically the, it was hurting a lot. Electrolysis is painful. Um, and especially my, my arm, my, my skin in general is very sensitive. I can't even wear scented lotions without like breaking out in a, in a, a rash or hives. I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, I, I apply a numbing cream. I just slather that bad boy on like an hour and a half before my session. And then I wrap my <laughs> arm in saran wrap. Uh, the first time I did it, I did it and then I walked like an hour and a half to my appointment because I didn't want to take a bus um, because electrolysis is also $80 a session and I am trying to save money so I'm just like I'll just walk which in the long run I'm sure is not a big deal it's like a dollar or two to take the bus but whatever I, I like the walk but by the time I got there all the goopy goop you know when your arm is being held at this angle for so long it was just like dripping by the time I got there, like, off of my uh, arm. So now I use paper tape on the end of it, and I taper it off uh, to get it nice and secure. But, uh, but yeah, once I get there, she uh, cleans me off, and then we do my electrolysis, and it's been fine so far. Um, there are, you know, like, it, it depends. Every single time that you apply the numbing cream, it's going to hit a different area, but uh, in general... There's like, you know, maybe one or two places where maybe it like really, really hurts, but then like, you're good, you know, uh, at least I have been. So yeah, I'm about to go to my electrolysis. Uh, I am also going to Ikea um, to look at things that I want for my Dallas apartment that like, you know, once I go into surgery, I'm going to want to just fucking relax. Um, and, and... You know, I get there on the 29th of July this month, a couple weeks, good gosh. Um, I get there and then I have surgery on the 3rd. I drive to Austin on, the, on August 2nd. So I don't have a shit ton of time to unpack my entire house. And I'm very excited for that opportunity. Um, but, you know, because I love a challenge and I love like, that seems really fun to me. Um, just like this exciting thing of like, oh cool, you only have this amount of time to do this thing. Uh, but I do have to have a teensy bit of planning just because I can't go in there, like, with my dick out. Um, it's gonna, you know, that's, that's, that's later. What was I even saying? I just woke up a bit ago. Like I said, I'm nocturnal, so maybe I'm not <laughs> at full capacity. Um, oh right, because like, that's what I was beginning to say. Uh, I'm gonna get surgery and then I want to just like sit on a couch and like watch Netflix like you know I, I I could just lay in my bed but my bedroom's not gonna have a TV in it um, so I have to buy a couch like a big boy but I need to my ass needs to test that couch first I'm not gonna buy a couch without without sitting in that in that bad boy I can't say bad boy twice in the same vlog I did I guess that makes me a bad boy. There's three. Now you get three. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get my arm zappy zapped, and I'm gonna look at couches, and that's gonna be my day. If I can figure out what couch I want at Ikea, then I can order it to be delivered in Dallas, like the 30th or whatever, but like I can't get to Dallas, then figure out what couch I want, and then have it delivered, so that's that's that. And uh, it's 86 degrees out. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. <laughs>
I just got back from electrolysis and Ikea both went very well. Uh, I think that I've had my last electrolysis session on my arm. Uh, it's tough because, you know, hair grows back and electrolysis, I think, is more permanent than laser. There was a reason that I chose electrolysis over laser. I think in my welcome packet when I did my consultation for phalloplasty, they, they said electrolysis is the better one to go with if you have a choice. I forget what those reasons were. I think it has something to do with how permanent it is. Don't quote me on that. Um, but, yeah, so I, you can just do the best that you can. And if I have to shave parts of my dick, then that's fine. Um, you know, because cis penis is also, like, you know, I've been with a lot of cis guys and non-binary people who were just born with a penis uh, who have, you know, a little bit of hair on their dicks, you know, and uh, partners of mine, I've talked to them specifically about this. And they've been like, oh yeah, no, I, you, you sometimes, you grow a little, the hair on your dick, and I just, I just shave it. And I'm like, cool, that's great. And, you know, maybe that will be even more gender affirming to be like, aha, I'm doing the, the thing that everyone else has to do. Um, but yeah, there's like, I'll show you a, a, a closer view of it, but there's no, there's no hair. There's no hair on my arm. There's a little patch here, um, but like, that's completely... It's, it's nothing. Like, that's easily shavable. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit on this, this underside of my arm. But also, they don't take the entire all around the arm, you know. Um, I think there's, there might be, like, this sliver, you know, where they don't take it. Uh, but, I mean, everyone's method is different. Everyone's, everything is different. So, but I have no idea. But, I don't know, I, I'm just, like... You deal with enough pain, and, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy with the amount of pain that I've suffered, uh, and then whatever else I have to do is fine with me. I've gone through enough pain, I think we're good. I did seven sessions total, seven um, one-hour sessions, um, and that's it, you know? I'm, I'm happy. I think I'm happy with this this amount of, uh, I, this is manageable, you know, um, and also, like, the top or whatever is gonna blend into my pubic hair, so, you know, that's not, uh, not a concern, and I'm happy, and I think that's the most important thing, is, is that I am happy, I'm happy with the results, I'm happy with whatever happens from this point forward, with, you know, y you get scared, I, I guess, like, I am so fucking ready, like, if I could just have this for stage one of phalloplasty right now, I would do it in a heartbeat, but when you have to think about it for a second, you're like, oh gosh, you know, this is a scary thing, um, it's a major surgery, and, you know, I'm gonna wake up at one point and have a, it's a big penis, that's insane, um, I don't know, I, I've had, I had two grinder hookups, um, the last week and talked to both of them about the process and everything and uh, they were both just like that's so fucking cool <laughs> like it, it, it's crazy that that technology has gotten to the point where I can wake up with a penis one day you know a bigger one at least and I'm glad because I'm I'm very I'm confident in my dick size right now it's just that like topping will be easier and it will feel a lot more fulfilling once I have my party dick as we call it um, in my in my chat I do twitch streams and we that's what we've named it um, we got my dick is gonna be implanted inside the party dick and I always describe it as you know a, a mecca like a you ever you ever see an evangelion um, anyway I'm excited, really fucking excited. The future is very bright for me, and I'm so, so fortunate uh, that I can even be dealing with this pain. You know, I was sitting in my last session, and I think like 15 or 20 minutes before it ended, I knew that was gonna be my final session. I was like, you know what, this feels right. This feels like this is it. Um, and I was just thinking about how fortunate I am that I can experience this pain. You know, when you go through uh, getting a tattoo, part of the experience of getting a tattoo is feeling the pain. And 
earning it in a way. Like, this is great. Like, I am, you know, experiencing this pain for a reason, and I'm gonna feel so fucking good afterwards because I, I'm nailing this shit. I'm fucking owning it. I'm so fucking strong, and I'm gonna get something physical to show how strong I am afterwards. Um, and I was trying to feel that as much as possible when I was getting electrolysis done, because it's like, fuck yeah, you're doing this for a reason. Um, your dick is gonna mean so much more to you now that I had to work for it, you know? I, I had to suffer for it, and I'm always gonna be grateful, you know? Moving is going great. It is so weird to see everything so clean. Uh, hello, Galicia. You enjoying the weird shit I'm doing? <laughs> my house, uh, working out today was difficult because now my house has gotten to the point where it is just a game of Tetris and the more boxes are filling up, the, the harder it is for me to move around. Khaleesi's enjoying it though. She likes all the space. Um, just a mess, but like also clean at the same time. Very weird. I'm watching <laughs> Dumb Walker. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're an Australian streamer, thank you very much because I am nocturnal. So when I am working, it's like 7.30 in the morning right now. <laughs> um, when, I'm, when I'm working, y'all are on. So I appreciate the fuck out of you. Um, yeah, everything is in boxes. Uh, and, you're, and I'm trying to get rid of stuff that like, I don't need or whatever, but I wanted to preserve this. So I'm getting it on film. This is the binder that I got after top surgery. My ex-partner Dash was so, so good to me. Uh, these are all personalized messages from my friends uh, because this is my, you know, we called it a cast because it's like the binder feels wrong. The point of top surgery is so you don't ever have to wear a binder again and then you get surgery and you're like, oh, this fucking rules. And then they're like, cool, now wear this binder for four to six weeks. Um, so we called it a cast because that just sounds funnier and better. You know, it sounds like what it was. I'm healing from a thing and I will emerge from the cocoon, a beautiful butterfly. And I did. Um, but Dash, Dash was so fucking good to me. They, um, they went to all of my friends and were like, hey, if you draw what you want me to put, on Jesse's cast, I will draw it on him. And they did all this fucking stuff. And all my fucking, if you're gonna focus, there we go. It's really fucking nice. But yeah, I love this. It's beautiful. I don't wanna bring it with me to Texas. <laughs> Got a haircut. Uh, this is my last haircut in Philly. The next one is gonna be in Austin. I think it's a good move to get my haircut before I go in for surgery. Uh, so I'm gonna find a place in Austin, get my haircut. There's a lot of trans dudes uh, in Austin specifically, so I will be able to find someone. Uh, not that someone has to be specialized in trans dude haircuts, but like to do my hair, but it's a good sign that like I'll be able to find something good. Um, what else? Uh, it's hard to work out in my apartment right now, but uh, something that I was uncomfortable with was like, oh shit, I was I'm gonna I was planning on working out all the way until my surgery, but I realized I'm not gonna have uh, the thing that protects my tailbone when I do uh, crunches. I'm not gonna have my pull up bar with me when I'm staying in the hotel for a week because I the truck comes, all my shit is loaded up, and then I'm in a hotel for um, six or seven days. And I was like, oh shit, I'm not gonna be able to like actually work out. Um, but I'm realizing that's good. I'm doing really, really intense workouts and it's not a terrible thing for me to take it easy the week before surgery. As much as I hate going easy, it's gonna be good for me. You know, I already stop, um, I'm, I'm stopping drinking alcohol two weeks before surgery just cause, just to be safe, you know? And uh, I realized it's probably a good idea to just take it easy. So let's take it easy the first week, um, or rather the week before surgery. And yeah, it's exciting. This is really exciting. You find a lot of uh, treasures when you're moving. You find a lot of stuff that you were like, I still have that. 
This is the receipt to my first dosage of tea after I got prescribed it. This is how old this fucking receipt is. That it's like water stained and falling apart. Paper isn't meant to last that long. They're like, no one's gonna keep the receipt for that long, two years or whatever. Uh, $38.20. $38.20 I spent to start my life. That was my tea, my sharps, the stuff that I needed. These are all the uh, used up things. I, I'm saving them because I'm gonna like, I don't know, do some kind of fucking art project with them. Might as well, you got all of them. <laughs> so this whole move, I have been chanting and hoping and hoping, please, please, please don't let the movers be a day late because when I moved from Brooklyn to Philly, everything got fucked up because the movers were a day late. <sighs> so anyway, I just got a call and the movers are a day early. And this is entirely my fault. <laughs> entirely my fault. If I hadn't been hoping, I didn't even think that this was a possibility that they would be here early. You know, at least it's better. I would much rather them be early than late. Because I just want to get this shit over with. But that means I'm fucking speed running everything. Um, because I need to finish editing a video. Uh, and then pack up my computer and monitors and stuff. So I'm working on that now. Um, I'm in the middle of a workout. I put on a shirt to vlog. <laughs> That's how committed I am to this. Um, so I'm sweaty and boof, but, um, we're doing it. We're working out. I'm doing the computer thing. Once I'm done editing that, I can box up my computer and all the monitors. And then, uh, I can box up this pull-up bar and all the other stuff. Um, oh. I didn't notice her there. And I can I can box up my squatty potty as well. And I can box up my cat. No, I won't. She's gonna stay here. Uh, she's staying here in this apartment um, because the hotel does not allow cats. So I'm keeping my air conditioning here. She's gonna chill here. Um, I have a friend coming over to help me take down my TV because they're coming a day early. And I was like, oh fuck, guess I gotta take the TV down myself. Um, things are happening. Things are happening. You know, it's so funny just preparing for this surgery because I have something called uh, endometriosis and it's basically just a thing that had made cycles when I used to have them. It made them really, really, really painful and terrible. Um, I was in so much pain that I could not go to school. I couldn't exist. I was just like lying in bed and just screaming in pain. Like it was, I think that that's, that's why I am so happy and cheerful is <laughs> because I have experienced the most pain a person can experience. Um, we were, we were trying to get me a hysterectomy when I was, um, I think 20 or 21, but it was too young to do it. Um, they put me on birth control when I was, uh, 14 or 15 because I, I needed something to manage the pain. And even then it, it didn't, yeah, I can only imagine how much worse it would have been if I hadn't gone on birth control. But, um, yeah, it's funny because I wasn't sexually active. I just, I needed birth control. And that's when, when people say that birth control is healthcare, that's what they mean. Um, I mean, it, it should be someone's right to go on birth control if they just want to have sex and, and not have kids. But also uh, birth control is prescribed to people with cycles in order to make them not want to die. Um, so my, I, I got uh, checked out to get a hysterectomy when I was younger and they were like, can't do it. Your bones will, will turn to dust because um, you're getting estrogen from it. It's a whole fucking thing. Um, but now transitioning, they're like, yep, we'll give you a hysterectomy. Come on through. Um, so that's great. But I didn't think that I was going to need this. I haven't had a cycle in, in two, three years almost, you know? Um, I didn't think I would need this surgery, so it's, it's funny that I'm finally getting it. <laughs> I think that is why I'm, like, calling it phase zero, is because I, I don't use my any junk for sex. I don't, I don't use it. There's no reason for me to get a hysterectomy. I, I, don't, I don't have sex with that part. I don't have a cycle. There's, there, there's no reason for me to have the surgery, except that it is solely for phalloplasty. <laughs> but it's funny. Life is funny sometimes. Didn't think I would return to the word hysterectomy, but now we are. 
Anyway, I'm gonna finish my workout and speed run editing this fucking video, and we're just, we're doing it. We're fucking doing it. <laughs> so I totally had not considered that the hotel that I'm staying in for the week before we fly out, I hadn't even considered that this hotel might have a gym. So I get to work out more. I thought I was gonna have to not work out, um, you know, the week prior to surgery, because like, I don't have my pull-up bar or whatever, and they, they know, I checked it out, um, they do not have a pull-up bar, but they have fucking every, anything else, like, this place rules, I love my hotel, um, everything is squished together, everything's like smaller and squished together, so my 5'4 ass is fucking thriving, you know, like, everything makes sense, this is like, I think this is how the hobbits felt, um, I mean, there's a door there size and stuff, um, yeah, everything worked out, mover things happened, I checked on Khaleesi today, and let's go fucking work out. <laughs> okay, just kidding, the gym closes at 9.30, so not working out there. Um, I already drank a pre-workout and uh, some creatine though, so we're gonna just work out in our room and do what we can, because we're dumb, we didn't read, but that's okay, because you know what, we learned something. <laughs> video. Cops are gonna watch this later and be like, huh, well, looks like he died from being a fucking moron. <sighs> the world is your gym. <sighs> so my gynecologist called and said that they talked to my insurance and I still have not met the minimum deductible, so I still have to pay about $537 and change when I get there for my pre-op. So that's fun. But everything's good. Everything is moved out. I drop off my key before 6 p.m. today, and I catch my flight tomorrow. We're doing it. Okay, explain that to me again. Okay, so Yellow Lab calls in to 911. Uh-huh. What's your emergency, 911 <laughs> says? Dog says, my owner has been gone for 0.2 seconds. Uh -huh. 911 says, have you tried eating the couch? That's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you for that. I did experience some uh, really bad cramping last night. Sometimes I think it's because of the endometriosis that, like, I just, I, I get the very intense pain again, even if there's no blood. Um, it got up to like a, an eight or a nine on the pain scale. It kind of just keeps at this base level. I tried taking two Advil or two ibuprofen and it wasn't enough. And I had to take four. I was prescribed four ibuprofen every eight hours when my symptoms were doing it. So that's a, that's a normal thing for me. And I guess this is just a nice little reminder as to why I'm getting the surgery, I guess. I, I, it's nice. It's nice to, one last hurrah for the pain to be very bad. Oh, it was so intense. I'm better now, I considered vlogging this while it was happening and it just that wasn't that wasn't gonna happen it was too bad also i'm sorry about the angle the lighting is weird in here and if i do it from any other angle it's bohemian rhapsody we are on our way huh? on behalf of this flight crew in southwest airlines welcome to dallas are you so relaxed, sweetie? Yes, you're so happy. You were so stressed out the last two days. We made it. <laughs> it's fine. Oh look, fireplace in Texas. That's gonna be very useful. <laughs> So 
it is Saturday, and uh, the moving truck still has not shown up yet, which is great. Love it. Love it a lot. Um, there's a lot of things that we can't do until that happens. Like, I wanted to get my TV mounted, but I don't have a mount, and I need to know what size my TV is to get the mount, and I can't hire a task rabbit to mount the mount until I have the mount, and I can't get the mount until I know what size the TV is. So you see my trouble here. Um, so a lot of stuff is not done. We're trying to do what is possible. I was going to just shell out some money and be like, okay, I'm gonna be having surgery and I would like the stuff in my apartment to be assembled. So I'm going to do all this other stuff while hiring a task rabbit to assemble all this furniture. And then the task rabbit, his uh, girlfriend went into labor, which is great, very cool. But he wasn't gonna be able to do the job until days later. And I was like, oh, well, I need this done by this date, but thank you, you've been great, because he was great. He was very communicative. Um, but then when I tried to hire a new task rabbit, those wouldn't be available until like, you know, five to seven days later. So could have just kept him on for that. Wish I'd known that. We're figuring things out as we, we go. We're rolling with the punches. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be a little chaotic until it's not anymore. It's been really hard not having my stuff here. It's stressful because I'm leaving for surgery, you know? The, the movers have, have not been responding to my calls or and I sent them some texts and so I, I they, basically there's a moving company and then there's the van where all my stuff is and I had to contact the moving company they gave me the direct number to the van I've been calling them they haven't answered so I called the moving company and was like hey I'm having surgery I'm leaving for Austin so y'all is it okay if I leave the, the key to my place and the money to get because I still need to give them the rest of the money in cash um, Can I give that to someone and that's cool and they were like yeah You can get a proxy and that made me feel a whole lot better, but also I just want some clean boxers, bro I just I want to not smell bad. I would love that. I've been living out of a suitcase um, And the same three shirts for the last Nine or ten days now Jesus I miss my stuff I just want my stuff. I just want to get it over with. We're trying to assemble a couch right now. Um, because we're trying to- I got all this IKEA furniture delivered to my place. Uh, with the intent that a task rabbit would assemble it. And now, I have to do it. Or I will just get so mad and give up and then eventually hire a task rabbit. But you know what? Lessons. These are lessons. Maybe I need to just buckle down and do some fucking work. Um... Even though surgery is off, we're leaving tomorrow. We're leaving tomorrow. Uh, Stefan has uh, been wonderful, um, and I asked I asked him to do me several favors, and he luckily was like, "Yeah, totally." Um, he's very wonderful, um, and one of those is being my proxy. So he's gonna show up and put my cat in a box and make sure she doesn't fuck with the movers. <sighs> I wish I was just here for it. I wish I could just be here to get my stuff. That'd be nice. I hate relying on other people. I'm sure the lighting for this entire video has been hot trash, but uh, luckily I look good in any lighting. Was a uh... oh, now I have to stop it. As anxious as I am with assembling things, I made a couch. I assembled my IKEA couch all by myself. It was a big boy move for me and made me feel very good that you can make something with your hands. Um, but I, I had to go to surgery a couple days later. So we, we left for Austin. A traffic jam at Bucky's. You know, I, I left the money with, uh, with my friend Stefan. And when the truck arrived, he was a proxy. So they would call him and he would be able to intercept my stuff. But don't worry, we'll, we'll touch back with that. In the meantime... We're we're in Austin in the story currently. I am enjoying my last workout uh, before surgery. After this, I will not be able to work out for two months, and I'm gonna be sad. Uh, this is the most gorgeous gym I've ever been in in a hotel. Probably, you know, I, this might be the best gym I've ever been in. I'm a simple I'm a simple man. I just need a pull up bar and some weights and a mat, and I'm good. 
Unfortunately, I'm 5'4", so we have improvised. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be very miserable not being able to work out for two months. But uh, I'm enjoying this while I can. I'm about halfway through. And there's, uh, I don't know if any lightning will happen while I'm filming this, but there's a lightning storm right now, and that's cool. It's like a cool sign. I don't know what it's signed for. Maybe it's to make me more powerful, like, go get it, or whatever, or, I don't know, but it's cool. It's cool that my last workout for the next two months is during a lightning storm. This is cool. This is very cool. There's also a pool. This place is very nice. <laughs> My hair is bad. That's understandable. Hey buddies, I just got out of my <laughs> pre-op appointments. Uh, surgeries tomorrow. We're stopping to get some chicken. I need to start drinking fluids immediately. I need to start. I didn't think I'd have to start this soon, but I gotta stop eating solids very soon and start drinking the Drano that will rid my body of all of its poop. Not looking forward to that. Or maybe I am. Pooping is it feels good, right? Because you something's exiting your body. I don't know. I'm conflicted. I got blood taken and I'm a little loopy right now. <laughs> the food will fix that. All of my doctors so far have been really respectful and very cool. All of the nurses have been as well. Um, I'm having a very good experience. I think I am starting to feel the scared um, a teensy bit. But you know what? It's okay to be a little scared, because things are scary. I don't know what the point of this is. I just wanted to update you. I know that there, like, there's people who are like, hey, Jesse, I want to make sure you're doing good, and I am. Everything's good. Everything's going to be good, except I'm going to be living in the bathroom starting at like 4 p.m. Uh, it's raining here in Austin, and our hotel fucking rules. I'll update you when, you, when I can. I had to make the decision uh, half an hour ago to get rid of my ovaries, and that's, um, it didn't affect me at all. Like, for, it's, it's different for cis women, but for trans men, we are able to get rid of the ovaries without it starting the aging process. Um, because if you're a cis woman getting a hysterectomy, sometimes they keep the ovaries to stop you from, like, aging, but with trans men, it's different. It involves testosterone. I'm not a scientist. I'm barely a human. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it is a decision that did not affect me at all. And I don't feel weird or bad about it, like, because you can keep the ovaries, and then one day, if I go off tea, I can have children. Um, and that's not for me. And I'm getting phalloplasty really soon. So, there is... That's gonna be yeeted anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a big life decision that I made, and I feel really good about it. And I think you shouldn't feel pressured to have kids if you know that it's not for you. I know society puts a whole bunch of bullshit on us, but you don't have to be a parent if you don't want to. I have not felt anything paternal in my entire, like I, I care about my cat, but that's different. Babies gave me out and you know, my mom accidentally, not her fault, just societal stuff. She put pressure on me that I, oh, I'll have kids one day or I'll want kids one day. And I just don't, I have nothing in me no biological clock telling me that I need to do some shit, that I need to come in a woman and make a baby. There's nothing in me that is that is telling me I need to do that. Um, and I think it's perfectly fine for you not to have kids if you don't want kids. So don't feel pressure by family or anything. It's your, it's your body, you know? Like, you get to decide that. And you shouldn't feel any kind of pressure, you know? And that's all I'm here to say. <laughs> There is something inside of me that is telling me I want to come in a woman, but not, not in that way. I want to do it safely. Um, but you know, even with, I was gonna say, even if I do come in a woman without a condom, it's not gonna, unless a fucking miracle happens, it's not gonna make a baby. Anyway, I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> I had two pre-op appointments today. Uh, the first was with my doctor, uh, the gynecologist, you know. Uh, who's not my regular one, but just someone that I met in Texas because she was recommended by the, the Crane Center. Um, and the second is with the hospital where I'm having surgery done. And I learned that they are going to shave my happy trail. And I'm very sad about that because I love, I, love I love my guy.
I love this very good happy trail that I've got going. Um, they're going to have to shave, like, all the way across here. It's basically the whole fucking thing. Um, but hopefully, it goes back. I have my tee shot tonight. And uh, just a funny anecdote is that uh, <laughs> I was at the hospital. My, my nurse fucking rules. She's great. Um, and she was just, everyone's been super cool, very respectful. She was going through, um, you know, all the paperwork that you have to sign. I mean, like, the attorney and, like, do you have, who do you want to give your stuff to? Do you have those papers? Whatever the fuck. Um, one of them was, like, if you need a blood transfusion, do you want the blood? And I was like, yes, please. I would like the blood. If I need blood, I would, I'd like the blood, please. Uh, and I signed it, and I was like, oh, that's probably, like, for religious re reasons? Like, why, why do people do that? And she's like, yeah, Je Jehovah's Witnesses, like, they, they can't take other people's blood. Um, and then she told me, and she was like, oh, you know, also, <laughs> she said that someone uh, was signing that paperwork once and was like, well, I don't want vaccinated blood. And she was like, well, that's not really something they screen for. So... I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I guess those kind of people are getting operations as scary as that sounds. The the stupidest people in the world are having babies also. D don't think about that. It's too sad. I'm just documenting this. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's 5.30 in the afternoon. It's time. I've eaten the last of my solid foods. Um, I'm drinking, this is not pee, it's, it's hydrate, and I'm just, just pushing liquids, just pushing all the liquids, because at 6.30, we stop food altogether, and I will spend the next several hours shitting out all of my bowels, just all of them, every single one. Um, we got a candle at the supermarket to put in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm sorry, mother, that you're gonna have to deal with this you signed up for this um we are going to the store to get another bottle of what is what is this thing called citrate citrate uh because i'm supposed to be drinking two bottles we did not realize that so cheers i'm just gonna be drinking all fucking night we found out h-e-b stands for uh the guy's last name is butt and uh what did you say about that mom <laughs> If my last name was Ben, I'd call myself H-E-B also. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, it is, what time is it? 6.07. 6.07. It's 6.07, and we think it is time for me to stop eating food and time to drink the poop juice that will make me shit. <laughs> so, there's there's live, a uh, live action. I was about to say live action. There's a live band. <laughs> there's a live band. Tonight. Uh, pl yeah, playing in the hotel. Um, and there is a bathroom, hopefully, next to it. I'm pretty sure I saw one. And it will maybe help me take my mind off of things if I just drink my poop juice and we can go... <laughs> and I'll have a glass of wine. And yeah, that'll be great for you. I'm sure this will be a wonderful <laughs> experience for you. We'll just go and listen and, to a band. And well, you can use the bathroom yeah. down there mm -hmm. and not smell up our bathroom. Yeah. I think it's all good. I think that'd be good. I should bring the candle to be polite. Mom says that I should take the magnesium citrate and put it in a nice wine glass like it's a treat. Yum yum. Yeah. Oh, it's just gonna fit. Mmm. Like a what's a wine expert? Sommelier. That sounds correct. Cheers. Sommelier. Ah. That sounds smarter. It doesn't taste as bad as I thought it would. Mm. This is the most cherry tasting thing really? that I've ever had in my life. It is so powerfully cherry that I think I want to die. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so cherry. This is the most cherry I've ever tasted in anything. I didn't even know I had cuts on my mouth. <laughs> just so you know, my mom was just saying that I should serve this as a, a cool prank. <laughs> April Fool's joke. Yeah, because no one can tell what it is. It looks like water. Wouldn't it be funny if you came oh, to my house and I made you shit your pants on my... <laughs> Furniture. I would absolutely love, it would make my life if someone hit on me while I was at this music event drinking this poop juice. <laughs> if someone thought I was attractive and then I was like, excuse me, I'm going to shit out every single one of my bowels. 
Oh, that's so bad. <clears throat> that's the chair, I swear to God. <clears throat> One more time. <clears throat> chair. 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 <clears throat> now I'm horny. Um, <laughs> so, what was I even gonna say? When you get this surgery, there's gonna be stuff falling out of you and stuff because your body's getting rid of the blood and stuff and that leaves an area that, you know, I experienced dysphoria uh, for, a, for a while in. Uh, I stopped, cycles stopped for me uh, two years ago, more than two years ago. I haven't had a cycle in, in more than two years. And... I was thinking about it today. I was like, Mom, should I get some adult diapers? Like, I don't want to ruin my underwear. And she was like, you could get pads. And if you don't know what those are, they're sanitary pads. They're what uh, people with a cycle can put in their underwear to line it instead of using a tampon. And I used pads uh, when I did have a cycle. I couldn't use tampons because um, I experienced too much pain in that area. And I couldn't fit a tampon up there. Um... And I did not feel any dysphoria when my mom suggested the get pads. Uh, I found it. Hooray! Uh, my mom was looking for a charger. <laughs> goodness, that would have been horrible. Cool. Yeah. It'd be great if you had a charged phone and could pick me up from the hospital tomorrow. Right. I'd prefer that. <laughs> what if I walked home? Um, but yeah, not experiencing dysphoria from that is incredible. And it's not something that I thought would ever happen. Um, I thought I was just going to... That probably looks bad. I thought I was just going to experience, I, there's a part, I don't know what the word is for it. I call it ascending. I've ascended to a point where you are so accepted in your everyday life as trans that you forget that you're trans. And uh, there's, there's parts of my life that gave me a lot of dysphoria before that now have zero effect on me. And that's incredible and very cool. And I did not think that that was a thing that would ever happen. Um, and that is part of what the pads were. Like, I'm going to wear sanitary pads in my boxers tomorrow, and I'm not going to feel any dysphoria from it. And that's, that's insane and very cool. Um, so yeah, if you're a binary trans dude who's looking to physically transition, I just want to let you know it gets better. Um, you know, it'll get better because even if the world does not see you as who you are, you get to see yourself as who you are. And I've become so comfortable just existing as myself that now the things that used to bother me didn't, don't, don't bother me anymore and i did not i don't know what the word is for it i call it ascending because you just like ascend to this higher plane of like you look god and anime in the eye and you you're just you're not afraid anymore and it's um there's probably a, smarter trans people probably have words for it that i don't but um t t anyway that's cool i didn't know that was gonna happen and that's gonna be interesting and if I ruin my boxers, I'll just give you boxers. Yeah. So we got the day wrong for the concert. It's actually tomorrow. So instead, I will be here enjoying shitting my bowels out. Hooray. I'm ready to bottom now. <laughs> my butthole hurts so much. <laughs> it's not been a fun night, y'all. <laughs> I got both the bottles of, of poop juice in my body. And, you know, once you get, like, half a bottle in you, you start to be like, ruh ro gonna, gonna shit. And let me tell you, I've had so much gay sex. There have been so many dicks in my ass. And I've been fine. My ass is apparently very talented, which I did not know. Um, I only started bottoming, like, a couple months ago. And I apparently have a very magical ass, a very talented butt, that I'm able to fit a lot in there without that much foreplay, apparently. And everyone that I've been with, every time I'm like, yeah, that was like, I've, I've only been bottoming for like a month or two months or whatever, they've been like, what? It takes so much to get something in my ass. And I'm like, I... I don't know, I just do it. <laughs> um, a lot of things have been in my ass, and 
I cannot tell you how sore my asshole is right now. It is burning. That's how much shit has come out of it today. Not good, not fun. Um, I threw up, which I don't blame on the poop juice. I think it's because my mom gave me this hydration stuff that's supposed to help you, and it tasted fine. But I think I just had so much foreign stuff in my body. I don't really drink anything other than, than water. So when you put a lot in me, like my stomach expanded and I felt like so bad and I felt like I needed to throw up and I was like, I can't, I gotta keep it all down. But then I, you run back and forth to the bathroom and I, I shitted and I went to flush the toilet and all of a sudden I just, I was like, I'm gonna fucking throw up and I did in the toilet and then I cleaned up my shame. It wasn't even one throw up. I did it three times and was like, okay. And honestly, I feel better. I feel better about having it three times. I think if I threw up once, I feel like a loser. <laughs> At least with three, it was like, oh, that had to come up. Whew. Let me tell you, I felt way better after I threw up. But it was scary because it's like, oh no, if I'm dehydrated, then what's going to happen? Do we have to go to the hospital? Do they have to put an IV in me? Are we not going to do the surgery? So I was like, I'll just lightly drink water. I think it, I, I told my mom, I was like, I think it's the hydration stuff. I think I'm, I think I just need water right now. So he got me some water and she heated up some chicken broth and I drank that and that's great. Once it hits midnight, I cannot put anything else in, in my mouth. That's, they, they had a weird way of phrasing it in the paper. They said nothing by mouth after midnight or something like that. We were like, but okay, but, but that just no liquids because you don't want to throw it up. I'm still pooping. I feel a lot better now, though it's been, you know, the more time goes on, the more shit you get out of your body. You know, it, it's, it's good when it's no longer solid stuff. It's just you shooting water out of your anus. Then you know you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not good. It doesn't feel good. It probably feels worse than the shit before. Or actually, I can't tell if this shit before felt bad or if it's just a marathon that my asshole is running. And that's why it hurts so much right now. I gotta wait. I have to wait until I, I'm done shitting. And then I have to put this in my butthole. I've never given myself an enema before. The, the the green and orange parts come off. Don't, don't worry, they're just... This is a lot of water. It, I'm just realizing that now. It doesn't seem like a lot. When it's going in your butt? Yeah, maybe. They said to stick it up with a side-to-side -side motion, and I'm just like, just put some lube on that puppy. Just... <laughs> I'm so excited for surgery. I'm a, I'm a unicorn. I'm the horse that touched the records. I'm wearing my mom's shirt. I was getting chills. I was getting like hot and cold. Because your body, you're putting so much liquid into it. I'm excited for surgery. Funny enough, I was a little nervous because I thought that I was going to need a COVID test, but... No, they're, they're only testing people for COVID if um, you're symptomatic of it. And I have my little mouse, my little beanie baby mouse, Cheezer. He's been with me since I got my tonsils out. I hugged him then. I hugged him when I got top surgery, you know, recovery from these things. And, and now I'm, he's in my suitcase. I made sure not to pack him in the move. Speaking of which, the movers have not contacted us yet. Where the fuck is my stuff? <laughs> Where the fuck is everything I own? It's not like they misplaced a box. It's... Someone is holding everything I own hostage in a van somewhere, and I just don't... I don't know where it is. Is this a real moving company? Have I been duped? Did I pay someone a bunch of money to steal all my shit? We'll find out. Future Jesse knows. Past Jesse is present Jesse. And I don't fucking know shit. <laughs> I wanted to 
have sex one more time before uh, surgery, before my, my hole became an exit of like maybe maybe entrance, maybe two-way street, maybe this becomes a tunnel where both cars can enter and exit. Um, so when I grind her and I lined up two dudes and uh, they're both great, they're both really sweet and wonderful and I had to choose between them and the first one I don't want to go I don't want to say too much about them because that's, you know, shitty both very hot, both would have been excellent choices and one of them, I just got the feeling that I, I wanted to vibe. I, I felt like we could vibe, you know. He seemed like really nice, and that I was like, well, I honestly don't care if we have sex or not. He seems really cool, so I picked him, and it it it, it went really well, and we hung out. It was really great. And I made a friend, and that was nice. I think it's important to feel sexy in other ways, you know. We don't have to come in order to feel sexy. I don't need outside validation in order to feel attractive. I just, I like companionship. Having friends is nice. And when you meet like a genuine person, it makes you think the world sucks a little less. So even though I didn't get laid, that was the right choice. And so I'm happy with it. And then the other guy, I got his number. I was like, hey, you're super hot. I'm starting my shit fest when I drink something that makes me shit out everything a lot earlier than I thought. So I'm not going to be able to hang with you, but I'd love to get your number because you're super hot and very cool. He was like, yes, I would love to. I would love to give you my number. And he did. So we've been texting. And, uh, and he's in Houston. And he knows I'm in Dallas. So if we ever link up it's really nice because he made me feel very attractive too and I think it's important to realize these things for me you know that, that you can feel attractive without having sex with a person I feel good I feel good I made some friends I didn't get off I really don't feel like jerking off right now I don't think I'm gonna come before surgery unless this edema fucking does something if this this awakens something in me. <laughs> oh dear, what if it did? That'd be okay. I also have to wash twice with this uh, Hibis Hibiclins. Hibiclins. Hibiclins? Chlorohexidine gluconate. You gotta wash with this twice. Once tonight and once tomorrow morning. Don't wash my face or my ears. It can harm it somehow. Don't like that. There's threatening on the paper. I don't know what that means, but I'm not gonna fucking chance that. And I also have to do my tee shot in a little bit. And I've been wondering, cause I gotta, I gotta time my tee shot where I take a, an allergy pill and I put a steroid cream on the spot where it's gonna go. Then I wait half an hour and then I do it. But what if I'm still shitting, you know? So I've been trying to time it correctly. I'm actually excited now. I think I've worked through the stages, you know? I'm fucking excited. I will be glad to get it done. And if I get these organs out of me that aren't supposed to be there, if I get them out before the movers show up at my place and dump all my shit, I will give them an enema. <laughs> Goodbye, tummy fluff. I will see you again soon. Enema crackers in my soup. It is shit and it is poop. <sighs> so you know how there are two kinds of shits that I was talking about, the kind where it's at the beginning and it's getting all the stuff out and then later the shits that are just liquid? The liquid ones hurt the most. And that fucking enema.
It's just the liquid. It's the liquid I should have known. I didn't think about what it would feel like coming out. But water propelling out of your asshole at any speed is bad. <laughs> it hurts. Didn't like it. It's zero out of ten review, I'm sorry, Enema, but fuck off. <laughs> you know, I have not thought about my belly button since middle school. I know whether you were in any or an Audi was like a big deal in middle school, just like if you were left-handed or right-handed. Um, I've never, I have not thought about my belly button in years and years and years. And now I'm looking at it for the first time because there's going to be a scar in there. <laughs> and when she told me, you know, oh, we have three scars, one here, one here, and then we're going to hide one in your belly button, I was like, huh, I guess it would be hiding in your belly button because you don't think about it. No one looks there. They're like, oh, it's a hole. <laughs> I guess there's, there's going to be another hole in there. Is this someone's fetish? Me playing with my belly button. Is, that, is someone going to jerk off to that? I mean, that's okay if you do. The truth of the internet, and maybe it's just because I've been making content since I was 15 and I'm very desensitized to it, is that people are going to jerk off to you no matter what. <laughs> it's fine. It's human nature. Like, I'm fine with it. I could literally be doing nothing. People will jerk off to me, and that's cool. I could literally be sticking my finger in my fucking belly button. Oh, you like that? Boop, boop, boop. Beep, boop, pop. Does that make you hard? And people jerk off to that. And you know what? That's cool, too. Everyone's cool. Everyone has a sex drive. As someone who uh, puts a great amount of testosterone in my body, I know boners happen kind of weird times and places. And you know what? We jerk, I, I've jerked off to weird stuff. Not super weird, but... Everyone's weird is different to everyone else. So. Anyway, that was me talking about my belly button. So that day I had two pre-op appointments, one with the surgeon, you know, the gynecologist who was going to do my surgery, and the other with the hospital. At the pre-op with my surgeon, we went over my check to gene test, which is something that I did last time. My mom uh, has the check to gene, and so it was recommended that I get checked for it. Luckily, I don't have it, but the test did reveal that I am more likely to get breast cancer. Yet just another way transitioning has saved my life. I think that even if we hadn't discovered that I was trans, I still would have had to have them removed. We went over all the details for the next day, and she said that I can eat whatever I feel like eating afterwards. At the hospital pre-op, I found out that I still hadn't met my deductible and owed thousands of dollars. Bare minimum to get surgery, I still needed to immediately shell out around 1300 Because of the move, I didn't have enough money in my bank account. I'm very fortunate that my mom was there because she was able to loan me half. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. The hospital took some blood and some pee and gave me some prescriptions to fill. And I was fucking dreading it because I was like, oh god, if, if I have to pay more money. But luckily, the pharmacist rang up my prescriptions and they were free. Thank you, insurance. Finally fucking doing something. I took my first shower with the special surgery soap and got a little bit of sleep. And then it was surgery day. The morning of, I cleaned myself with the uh, with the special shampoo. <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's do it. This is the outfit I'm wearing to the hospital. I figured. I don't know. I'm wearing flip flops. You know, like easy to take off the shoes. 
and the, my easier to take off shoes are in the moving van, which still hasn't arrived. Isn't that fun? Anyway, let's not think about that. Let's get cut open. <laughs> the pre-surgery packet the hospital gave me made it sound like I shouldn't bring anything with me, so I didn't bring my phone. My mom dropped me off with two things, a piece of paper with my mom's info on it and my insurance card. I was scheduled to be the first appointment of the morning, bright and early. I was only waiting a few minutes before they took me back. They put me in a room and had me take off everything. Turns out I could have brought my phone. They gave me a bag that says all the possessions of this patient and you know i could have put it in there but oh well the nurses were all super nice like really nice like really really nice i think i still wasn't used to how texas is especially with a trans patient i was expecting to be treated like a fucking alien but i only got misgendered once by one person and i think it was a genuine mistake or someone never taught her how to interact with with transgender patients because she seemed to fully accept me. She called me buddy a bunch of like she just seemed really nice and like she did not know what she did was wrong. And it's funny because she was the one to put the IV in my arm and, and my veins just she either she wasn't seeing them or my veins just were not popping up. I think it was mainly my fault. My veins were just maybe not cooperating that day. It took four tries to get in the vein and she kept apologizing. Eventually someone else had to do it, but she she felt very bad. She just kept apologizing for it. And I, I was like, oh, it's OK. But in my head, I was like, I'd rather you jam another hole in me than misgender me. <laughs> but funny enough, it didn't make me feel bad at all which I found weird. Like, misgendering is supposed to make a trans person feel bad, right? I don't know, I kept waiting for it. If I had been in this hospital setting and someone had, you know, fucked things up years ago, I, you know, could have had a panic attack, I could have just felt really shitty or uncomfortable in my body, but I didn't feel anything from it. I was perfectly fine. And that's foreshadowing for later, but we'll get to that. I was laying down in a wheelie bed at that point, and then they wheeled me into another room, they put me on a new bed, they let me breathe oxygen to start off, and they must have switched to something else at some point, because then I woke up in another room, and, you know, an hour or two had passed. I have this memory of waking up and it's foggy, you know, because I thought that I was awake that whole time. And then you realize slowly, oh, no, I've been asleep and I'm, I'm, I'm awake now. And I was pushed from room to room on the little bed. And at one point in one of the rooms, I got very cold and I started shivering and they did their best to cover me up. I was perfectly covered, but I was just very cold all of a sudden. And every room I got pushed in, everyone just kept saying I could not stop smiling. Just the biggest fucking smile on my face. When I finally got to the, the destination of where I would be spending the next few hours, I got apple juice and crackers, and my nurse was extremely nice. All of the nurses were just so, so nice. I recovered for a bit. I got a drug. I, it was called Roxy. I don't know if that was short for anything or if I nicknamed it Roxy, but I fell asleep. <laughs> I passed out for like two hours. My nurse took her lunch break, and when she got back, she told me, hey, why don't we try to pee? So she walked me to the bathroom, I sat on the toilet all by myself, she wasn't in the room with me, and I got extremely faint. But I wrote it out like I always do, you know, because if you've never fainted before, and, and perhaps this might be different because I, I've had a, you know, a chronic like fainting condition since I was three, the world seems to change around you. I haven't had a fainting spell this bad since uh, maybe uh, maybe I was like tw in my early 20s. But I sat on the toilet and sounds muffled and I couldn't see. I describe it as like there's these little dots that start appearing in your vision. And soon the dots start appearing faster and faster. And all of a sudden you just can't see. And, you know, the world gets muffled. It's like you're underwater. So both of those things happening at the same time, it really fucks you up. But for me, I didn't bat an eye because I was fucking used to it. My fading condition got way, way better once I started tea and I started working out. But it was a familiar feeling and I knew how to deal with it. I didn't even flinch. I was like, yeah, okay, throw your hissy fit body. Let's fucking get this over with. And I wrote it out like I always do. And eventually it went away and I focused on my, my shit. And I realized, of course I'm faint. I haven't had my blood pressure pills. And my body just went through a bunch of trauma. Of course I'm going to feel faint. And I felt really good in that moment because I realized that it has taken so long for my body to try to kill me again because I am just so strong now. <laughs> 
that shitty feeling didn't fucking phase me because I dealt with it for so, so long. And now I'm so well equipped to handle it. And I know it's only fucking with me because I'm in a weakened state. That's how much my fainting condition sucks is that it has to wait until I'm at my weakest point. Otherwise, it can't hurt me at all anymore. But anyway, I'm on the toilet. Let's do some toilet talk. I shit a bunch, but no pee. And I realize in that moment, the shit that I'm doing, it's, you know, well, you don't know. It's enema left over. It's not actual shit. It's like I, I, I have experienced the enema at this point where I realize, oh, this is this is left over from that. I can recognize it. It's more like a diarrhea and water combination rather than actual poop. And as I was sitting there trying to pee but failing and was like, you know what? I'll stand back up. I don't think it's happening because it's been 20 minutes. I realize in that moment, I wonder, the question pops into my head and it is, am I wearing underwear? Because I'm out of it. I've just had surgery. I'm on drugs. I never stopped to think if I'm wearing underwear. But I'm like, of course I'm not wearing underwear. I didn't, I didn't put underwear on me. But then I realize, looking down, ah, I am wearing underwear. Someone must have put underwear on me. And I have shit in this underwear. <laughs> I'm sitting on the toilet wearing underwear I didn't know I was wearing. And I have shit in the underwear. And I'm pretty out of it. But I s smile and I start laughing. <laughs> it is a mesh underwear that has a pad inside of it because this operation is usually meant for people um, who, who have a cycle. So they're used to there being some leakage. Um, and there is a little bit. And I won't spoil for later, but we'll just say I, I don't really have a lot because I haven't had a cycle in two years. I get up. I apologize to my nurse. I say that I have shit my underwear that I did not know I was wearing. And she <laughs> goes and gives me a new pair. They are apparently called Victoria's Satan because <laughs> they're just they're awful underwear. And that's very funny. I clean up, put new underwear on, go back to my bed. I'm hanging out there for a bit. And then my mom gets there. She shares that my surgeon went and tested my sample of the stuff that they took out of me. And there was lots of endometriosis on it like the shit was covered in it and that is so fucking validating to know that this piece of shit disease that was fucking rotting me from the inside is out of my body and will die alone <laughs> rip in piss fucker <laughs> my nurse says that the three goals right now are getting me back to eating and drinking as soon as i can getting me up and moving as soon as i can and peeing these, these are the goals. These are, we can do this. These are achievable. The sooner the better for all three of those things. I lived. Uh, everything went really well. I will talk more about it when I am able to think all my thoughts through. But I wanted to show you my post-surgery hair. It's very hot. <laughs> uh, drink of water. They gave me some apple juice. Um, I had some, some crackers, I had some saltines first and then some graham crackers, they were both very good, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, after surgery, oh, that's the best graham cracker I've ever had. <laughs> um, they brought me in here and they, they said that I couldn't stop smiling, which is very cool. Um, this is nothing like uh, top surgery, top surgery I could not move it was like very very intense pain even though i was on the painkillers um i was able to get up pretty okay i was able to try to go to the bathroom a lot of the more of the enema came out but i wasn't able to pee so we're trying to get me a pee they're gonna scan my bladder so i have to pee before they let me out of the hospital that's that's one of the things they have to make sure that i i urinate uh so we do the ultrasound and my nurse concludes that there should be enough P to P. Uh, so before she tries like medicines or anything, she wants to teach me a few tricks. You know, like she has peppermint for me to smell, which helps me to relax. Uh, the action of blowing a candle apparently like relaxes the muscles in that area to coax the pee out. There's a water bottle that they put warm soapy water in, and I can like squirt it on my inner thigh, and it's kind of like the feeling of being in warm water helps to 
promote P, but I really should have told her about the time that I was like maybe hooking up with a girl at a convention. You know what? The story probably wouldn't have been good to tell her. <laughs> the long and short of it is that I'm a nervous peer and I was with a group of friends and this cute girl and I was supposed to go to the side of the pool. She was like, just go pee, like go pee in the pool. It's fine. Um, and I wasn't able to, to pee. So I know that me being in water does not promote helping me to pee. Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, what happened was I tried all of the tricks in the bathroom. None of them worked. And so I had to get a catheter. I had to get a catheter while awake for the first time. And let me tell you, that was a very experience. <laughs> it was very much an experience and I don't wish it on my worst enemy. But you know what? Every single fucking day that I am not experiencing an enema and an awake catheter for the first time within the same 24 hours, every single day that it is not that day, I feel fucking incredible. Um, you never feel as strong and as powerful as when you experience something as horrible as that. So you know what? I'm glad I got to experience it and it is over now and I will never have to do that combination of things again because the next time I have to get a catheter. Yeah, no, that's it because I'm, I'm not going to be awake because it's going to be for phase one. And then the next time it's I'm going to be getting a catheter in my penis and it will be a different experience. I'm sure it will fucking hurt the next time that I have to do that, but it will not be that experience. I'm in the car, we are on our way back to uh, the hotel and my mom's phone is dead and she just uttered the phrase, uh, my phone is dead, can you direct me when you're high? So we're, we're gonna find out. <laughs> we're going to find out if I can direct us home with the GPS <laughs> while I am high. Looking cool, Jesse. I'm very high. Looking really cool. I can't wait to get your chicken, yeah. mashed potatoes, corn, yes. ice cream. Yes, that'd be awesome. That would be lovely. I'll push the button. It's okay. one of those things where when you're high, you constantly want to be like, I'm high. Like, just telling people. Like, yes, <laughs> Jesse, we fucking know. We can tell. <sighs> I'm so fucking happy, y'all. <laughs> My voice is a little, uh rough right now. Where's Cheezer? Cheezer. It's my buddy. It's my little buddy Cheezer. Cheezer was with me when I got my tonsils and adenoids out as a kid. And he was also with me when I got top surgery. He's my little guy. He's, he's so cute. The only stuffed animal that I've kept since childhood. I knew I had to have him with me so I didn't pack him on the truck. I'm so fucking happy. When I woke up, I, I got passed around from nurse to nurse because like, you know, you scoot through, this happens. You scoot through another room, this thing happens. I was loopy, I don't know what's happening. Things were happening. And um, every single time I went to a new room, they were like, he can't stop smiling. I love to see it. You know, like they just kept commenting on what a big smile I had. Um, I'm just happy. Hard part's over. I had to get a catheter. Oh my god. Fuck, dude. Mm -mm. I tried so hard to pee. I was so desperate. They wouldn't let me. Like that's one of the conditions that they had to to get me to leave. You know, it was like, okay, we have to do. You once you pee, we can get you dressed and take your IV out and all that shit. I'm sorry, I'm high. I forgot to talk about the thing that I started talking about. My voice is a little hoarse because I've been dehydrated and talking and stuff, but it's sexy and I like it. Bang. What's that line he says? I love a girl that can kick my ass. Only on... <laughs> Only on Toonami. God. Such a dork. Okay, back to the story. I tried so hard to pee. They sat me in there. They had a bottle. They were like, squeeze them on your leg. You know, maybe that'll that'll do it. Um, peppermint. Uh, my hand's in the way if I do this. My hand's a little shaky just because like, you know, ugh, I'd be, it'd be weird if it wasn't shaky. Um, tried everything. 
letting the faucet run, everything. Forcing it, just being like, let's fucking go, time to pee. Um, nothing worked. I was so desperate, I went on my phone and I went on YouTube and was like, how to pee? Maybe someone has some things. That didn't work. I'm just very high and very happy right now. And that's pretty cool. Um, so hopefully everything goes well with the peeing because I couldn't pee, so they, they had to give me a catheter. And uh, if you've ever had a UTI, it basically just feels like that, where it's like a... Oof. Going in was the hard part. And then once it's in you, I was fine, like just letting it pee, you know, letting the pee come out. And then uh, taking it out hurts, but not as much as going in. So that was, that was good. And she gave me two choices. One, we could do a one and done catheter where you just put one in, drain it, and then leave. And then you should be, most people are, are fine peeing afterwards. There's just a lot of pressure and being in a high stress environment of the hospital. She was like, I think you're gonna be fine. Or we could put a catheter in you that stays in you and then you get it taken out tomorrow. So you don't have to worry about like, if it's the middle of the night and you're feeling really shitty and can't pee, you gotta go to the ER, you know? And uh, she was, so she was like, it's, it's uh, totally up to you if it's worth the gamble. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we did a one and done and hopefully I can pee on my own tonight. And through all of this, I have felt zero dysphoria. Like I'm wearing a pad right now and I've never felt more masculine. I think when you just, when you become secure in yourself, nothing else matters. And I wasn't even trying to, it just, just happened. It's crazy that I went through everything that I did today and I didn't feel any dysphoria. There's a point where I was in the bathroom and you know, dealing with genitals that don't belong to me, but are on me, you know? And I felt zero dysphoria, just dealing with it. I was like, I'm a dude and I have this, and that's just the way it is. So by Celine Dion. And, um, yeah, I was secure in myself. I wasn't even trying to be, I was doing the stuff. And then I looked in the mirror and it was my face. And I'm handsome as hell. I'm a guy and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, having dealt with things that are not tr traditionally masculine and I, and I did it, quotes around that, I'm high, you know what I mean. Despite everything, it's still you. Only on Toonami. Bang. <laughs> I love a girl that can kick my ass. The night before surgery, as I was drinking my poop juice, we decided to take some pictures on these really nice couches because like we were staying in a nice uh, hotel. It was basically like a, a mini apartment because we wanted to be able to like cook and stuff in there because I was going to be recovering. And we thought it'd be nice for some like before and after pictures. And it's very fun how color schemes sometimes work into things. I didn't do it on purpose, but it seemed that... You know, I started in yellow socks and I ended up in other yellow socks. And uh, it's it very similar to the, the things that I put on Instagram and Twitter where I was wearing a purple shirt and then I ended up in a different kind of purple shirt, quote unquote. It's kind of funny how things turn out. So this is what you look like afterwards. <coughs> My throat's a little dry because I've been dehydrated. I look like a wrestler. Especially with the yellow socks. Yeah, I'm a lot less hurt than I thought I would be. Maybe tomorrow is going to be the hard part, but um, I'm walking around. I'm good. Got codeine in me. Not right now. I'm about to take um, a codeine. It's going to make me very high, but it'll make my pain less bad. So. The scars are not where I thought they would be. I thought they were going to be more here, but they are here. And we've got little, she called it like super glue, the second skin type thing. Um, but it's probably different from second skin. The second skin is, um, there's a 
more technical word for it, but it's when you get a tattoo and they put this film on it that covers it and you wear that for like weeks until it falls off uh, instead of applying like cocoa butter or um, hustle butter or anything. I feel great. I've felt zero dysphoria so far. Um, I would show you the underwear that I'm wearing, but I, I'm not sure if that's allowed on YouTube. <laughs> But um, it's basically a mesh, and it has a pad, you know, like a sanitary pad that's separate from it. And you put the pad in there and do this. Um, I'm barely having any spotting. I was, uh, you know, reading about that. But the thing is, like, all of the information online is about cis women who are getting this surgery, who have cycles. So all of that is based on that. So I read about, like, you're going to spot for a while. But I went to the bathroom, and um, my nurse helped me. And she said, wow, I barely saw any spotting. I, don't, I, I haven't had a cycle in two years, so maybe that's why. Um, which is why this video is important, because there's no fucking information on trans dudes getting these things. Um, but yeah, this is great. They called this underwear uh, Victoria Satan's, which is great. Cause it is a verb, it's very sexy. Just believe me, you can, you can tell. Um, yeah, I got a scar here. Or two scars, you know, one scar here, scar here. And one in my belly bottom. The stuff on my belly is like the sanitary stuff or whatever, I don't know words for things. But um, yeah, there we go. We're trying to figure out what these dots are and I think it's marker. <laughs> I thought that I had been cut here but there's also one in my belly button. I don't know if you can see this part right there. It's black. And I thought it was dried blood, but it's marker, I'm assuming, because there's also one right there as well. There's not one here, but maybe they just got the idea of it and guessed. Ab muscles were a little hurdy at first. You know, this whole process has been a lot less painful than uh, top surgery was. When top surgery happened, I was like a little turtle where I was wearing a binder and I couldn't even like sit up, you know, like without a partner's help. And I was like, ooh, it was, it was so painful to, to, to sit up. Um, that was my own chest. And I guess it's funny that like the abs hurt less, but it's also, we do have to factor in, um, my nurse mentioned and that made me think about it. Um, I'm in good shape. Uh, when I got top surgery, I had not been working out, and, and now we're coming off of a, a year of me working out every other day. So my ab muscles are fit, um, so that is maybe why I'm able to handle it better than someone else might. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Oh, and I, I can't shower tonight. I have to not shower for 24 hours, and I also have to wear these cool stockings uh, until lunch time tomorrow. You have to get warm for 24 hours. And um, I started wearing them at like 8 a.m., but we were like, just to be safe. Um, I was talking to my nurse because I was like, what time should I, you know, stop wearing them? And uh, she said, lunch, just to be safe. Yeah, that's, uh, I feel good. And I feel even better because I get to take Cody in, in like an hour. Now I need to pee at home. And I just tried and I couldn't. Had a lot of farts. <laughs> Some, some diarrhea, also just like a small amount, so at least I know I can shit, which is good. But yeah, I've been eating blueberries and stuff, so I can poop, but drinking water, I'm a little nervous about not peeing, but I should be okay, so let's just keep trying, you know? It's really fucking weird because throughout this whole process, I was really nervous about after surgery because I will have had my tummy <laughs> shaved and going through this whole process, you know, I, I thought I would be dysphoric. But every time that I look in the mirror, I can't stop thinking about how much I like what I see. Like, I think that I am very attractive and that's weird. Like, it's not weird to think you're attractive, but, but, but like, why do I feel more attractive after I've gone through this surgery that is traditionally for women, you know? But, um, I haven't felt dysphoric and I, I love myself more now. That's so weird to me, but I guess it makes sense because you're like, it's hot and cool that I'm challenging myself in this way and that I 
worked for this. So I guess maybe that's it. I don't know. It's weird. It's one of those things that we're figuring out as we go. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It does make sense thinking about it. I feel hot. I feel hot because I went through a lot of pain today and I feel great and I'm really happy. And when you're really happy, it makes sense that you'd find yourself attractive. I really do just look like John Cena. He has one of these things, right? I'm pretty sure <laughs> I just look like John Cena, like a bad John Cena closet cosplay. Update, I peed. I peed. I've never been so grateful to have peed if I had to do another catheter. Uh, I don't... I've experienced a catheter and an enema, both for the first time. I've, I've always been asleep for when I've needed a catheter. Um, and I've never experienced an enema. I don't know which one I'd rather do. Both of them sucked, and I'm very glad. Um, oh, I'm so glad to have peed. I'm so... <laughs> we are checking out of the hotel. My hair does not look terrible. I haven't gotten it cut. I was trying to figure out if I should get it cut, at least on the sides. But I like the floofiness. Um, we're... <laughs> Mom is flying back to... Yeah, these episodes, I'm like, what should I include? What should I not include? I'm also high. I think I have one more day of um, codeine left. So we'll see how my pain goes when they're gone. Uh, we're making one last trip to Bucky's to get some overbites and some salsa, and I was told I should try the cake pops there. I'm just loading up on some fucking sweets before uh, she drops me back at my place, and then I'm just there, and I will have to ask people for things. I, d I realized I don't have a pot to make pasta in, so I'll probably ask Stefan if I could borrow his. I'll just ask neighbors and be like, hey, um, I don't know if I should do a big walk-in to the store right now. Um, can I borrow a thing? Uh, everyone's been really sweet and really good with that. Um, I, they're really fucking appreciated. I haven't had to ask anyone for anything. Everyone's just like volunteered things, which is very nice and sweet. Um, uh, downstairs news, I'm not spotting at all. Like I expected some, I've been wearing the special underwear and pad just like, cause I don't want to ruin my underwear in case it just magically happens. But I think the blood is just gone forever. <laughs> I don't think I'm, like, I was prepared, like, okay, I'm gonna have some dysphoric whatever while it's like, but no, it's, I don't feel any dysphoria, and also the blood has just stopped, and I don't think it's ever coming back, which is a really cool, uh, thing to realize. But I don't have any regular underwear with me, and I don't want to wear the pad underwear, so I'm just, I'm freeballing it today, and every time that, uh, something like that happens, my writer brain is like, I hope this doesn't become plot relevant. You know what I mean? I hope me not wearing underwear is is not included in the Wikipedia summary of today's episode. Because if it is included, that means something bad has happened. <laughs> every time, every time something like that happens in my life, I'm like, don't let this be in the, the spark notes. <laughs> Make this be not even a detail. Let it be something on a, a pop quiz someone writes about the book about this, and it's like a tiny detail that you could miss if you're not even looking too carefully. I am prepared to be in my house alone with my cat. And I'm really fucking happy. Another update, I'm, I'm still very happy. So mom caught her flight back to Connecticut, and I'm here in my empty apartment all by myself. And I slept for a while, and I, uh, yeah, I slept for a while. I'm, I'm trying to space out my codeine as much as possible now, because, like, this is it. I don't get more. This is a, an addictive substance, so they're not going to give me more. Um, so if I'm feeling it, I, I just want to make sure that I am spacing it out a good amount. They say that you're supposed to be taking it every six hours, and this is by all means not something I'm telling you to do. Please follow your doctor's instructions. Um, but for me, if I'm not feeling the pain as much as, like, if, if I don't need the pill, then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll wait like an hour or two. And then usually the pain is worse and I'm like, good, okay, now I'll take it then. Um, cause I'm also spacing it between, you're just coordinating all the medicines. Um, the Tylenol, the ibuprofen, I'm out of the prom, whatever the fuck, the nausea medicine. Um, 
So balancing that, I'm also taking a stool sample, stool sampler, was uh, what I was gonna say, stool softener, because I still have not shit. Uh, I'm taking a stool softener for that. Um, it's a pill that you take like three times a day, and I'm also drinking, what is it called, Miralax? Because that's, they're two different things. They do different things to the poop. Whatever the case, um, I'm just gonna put that there. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to like, I wish I had my stand for my camera, but I have to hold it. Anyway, on topic, the question is, would I have been able to handle this recovery by myself? And if I didn't have anyone else, if my mom could not help me and I had to do everything by myself, would I have been able to take care of myself after a hysterectomy? Yes. Uh, was it a hell of a lot easier to have someone here for three days of the recovery? Yes, definitely. Um, the things that were difficult for me that would have been a challenge but I could have gotten through if I had to do it by myself are mainly, uh, one, managing my medicines and the time of the, you know, because you have to take this one every six hours and then take this one every eight hours and then switch out, make sure you're doing ibuprofen and then Tylenol and switching them off. Um, if someone had written that down for me, I think that would have been great. But you need to remember that you're high when you're, when you're coming out of the hospital. Um, and so your brain is, I'm normally very shitty at math. So you add any complication to that of like any higher state of being where I'm, I'm not able to think at full capacity. Um, math hard, math high, very hard. Um, so that's the main thing. And the second thing was also just having meals be ready for me took so much off of my mind because I wanted to just sleep as much as possible and it was such a relief for me to just knock out for five hours and wake up and my mom is like, hello, I brought you chicken and mashed potatoes and corn. Um, that was fucking great. I love that. So those are the two main things that, that really made recovery much easier. I think three days is the right call. I think that if, um, if someone is not around to help you and you're going through this surgery, uh, three days is, is a good estimate. Three recovery days, not counting the day of coming home from the hospital. I count that as a separate day. The procedure is its own day. It's day zero. Um, and then night happens and then morning happens and that is the start of day one. So three complete days, um, if you need someone to help you, that would be my recommendation. That was all I really needed. This was a, a perfect amount of time. Um, and it's also a perfect amount of time so I don't get sick of my mom, you know, because we love our parents. But if we spend too much time together, we, we revert back to like the high school years, you know, where like if we spend too much time together, I start getting sick of her and she, every little thing she does starts to annoy me when she's not doing anything annoying. She's not doing anything bad. It's just that like there's something inside of you um, where it's just like, ah, you know, you remember why you moved away from home. And she's lovely and wonderful and perfect and I love my mother, um, but we can't spend too much time together. Um, but what else? Was there anything else I was going to say? No, I think that's it. I think I just wanted to, because that's what I was thinking. With Oh, oh and also, like, um, this is also just me saying this. I am a, and I don't want to, how do I say this? I'm a lot tougher than your average person. I have a lot of, like, self-discipline and a lot of, like, I need to do the thing, so I will do the thing. Um... I don't, and I, and I don't mean this to say that emotional or more sensitive people are lesser than me or whatever. I'm just saying that like, I might've been able to get through this on my own, but that doesn't mean an average person could. So I don't want me to be like, oh yeah, it wasn't a big deal, everything is fine. And then someone go out and be like, I was crying the whole time. What even, I was in so much pain and this was happening. And you know, um, so I wanna cover all my bases and just say that like, I'm a tough motherfucker and I, like, I don't, I don't cry, I don't feel a lot of emotion, T has, has suppressed that part of me, um, to a level where I'm very chill most of the time. So this maybe wasn't a big deal to me, but it could be worse for you, um, and I hope I said that in a correct way, I don't, 
like there's nothing wrong with being emotional there's nothing wrong with feeling your feelings like i am extremely empathetic i'm a huge empath even though i don't feel a lot of my own stuff if that makes sense i'm like a sponge and if someone is emotional or crying oh look Elise, what's happening she's doing a little circle i think she's gonna sit oh she's showing me her butthole isn't that great thank you i didn't want to see that right now she's very proud of it um fuck what was i saying um yeah i just i don't want people to think that it's not a big of a deal or also that like you're bad for being emotional you're great you're perfect and wonderful like feeling emotions is great and i feel a lot of them i am just more i was put through a lot of bad shit all at once and it kind of desensitized me in probably not the healthiest way to uh my own concerns and my own emotions you know so i put a lot of my own needs in the back seats just to tough it out and like get through things so like wasn't a big deal to me um the only thing that really scared me was the catheter i think when i had to get a catheter live awake in action um but i got through it and it was fine um and you'll get through it too uh yeah it's it's a process and i hope everything goes well for you if you're going to to go through this i'm just trying to i'm trying to be realistic and i'm also trying to convey the thoughts and feelings that i'm having you know and that's an interesting balance to strike because maybe to an average human this would be a bigger deal and you might experience more pain but like like I went to dinner last night with um, with uh, Scott, uh, cousin Echo, and, and my mom, and he was like, I was not expecting you to be walking around, and I was like, neither was I. And honestly, it might be the codeine. Maybe because I'm on painkillers, like I'm dealing with this a lot better. Maybe once, I have three pills left. Maybe once those run out, I will be feeling worse. But for now, all we can do is space it out as much as possible. And, Live mass, live in the moment, you know, if it gets worse, it gets worse, and I will report on that. But for now, I'm good. I thought I thought this was gonna be a bigger deal. I thought it was gonna be more pain. And this is also, again, information on trans men, like dudes on T who are going through this surgery. Um, because of that, uh, my appetite is different. I, I have a, an appetite. I have not been spotting. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm not dealing with that people who are not on T who go through this surgery might be going through. Uh, and all we can do is just be as accurate as possible with the information. Khaleesi, don't, don't crawl in the bag, baby. Baby, 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 baby. Hey, 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 don't do that. You're so weird. <laughs> she wants to crawl inside that bag. That's not a, it's a dirty bag. We don't want you in there. I'm gonna go stop my cat from suffocating herself. <laughs> Listen, I know I thank my patrons every video that I make, but this one, legit, the next two or three videos that are gonna come out on the channel, my patrons, thank you so much. I, you will see the fucking trouble that I went through with moving and, and surgery and everything, but uh, like y'all really fucking helped me out. So I really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I want to give a special shout out to my silver sponsors, Alex Buner, Andrew Dunn, Kieran Benson, Cyberlink420, Dan Millington, Dane McRae, Gatterine, Giselle Nera, Jean-Baptiste Rousey, Marie Byrne, Pocket Jawa, and Tasmarty. I also want to give a special shout out to my gold sponsors, Sam Bartram and Dorn McEwen. And last, but certainly, certainly, certainly not least, my diamond sponsors. This is the most diamond sponsors I've ever had. Thank you so much. Epam, Steve Straza, Sukiyomi, Getty Skog. Uh, this, it, am I pronouncing? We'll find out. And Rosie Kinks. Thank y'all so, so much. As a reminder, if you're a patron of mine, I really fucking appreciate you. And also, if I am pronouncing your name wrong, shoot me a message. Let me know. I'd love to pronounce your name correctly, and I'm an idiot. I've It's 7 in the morning right now. I've I've been nonstop editing this since I, I got my computer back. So it's been a, a long, long night, and I am not good at words even when I'm not tired. Thank you for dealing with my himbo ass, and I will see you in the next video where we do recovery stuff.